Hello everyone, welcome back to TechNet. Yes, I know it's been a while, however, we're going to be back with some Premiere Pro videos to start you off. Uh, in this series, we're going to be running through some basics to start with, just getting some clips in, how to edit them together, and actually exporting a sequence. And then later on in this playlist, you'll actually be able to find some more advanced tips, and hopefully by the end, you'll be able to call yourself somewhat of a Premiere Professional. So here we are on the new project screen. So from here, there's a few things we need to, de to decide to make sure we get the project set up correctly. The most important one is a name. Uh, so for this one, we're just going to be called it, uh, calling it Studio um, Tutorial. There we go. Um, make sure you give it an appropriate name, especially when it comes to submission time. Um, if we get a bunch of them ca all called untitled in there, they start overlapping with each other, overwriting each other, uh, and it comes it becomes pretty tricky to find out whose is whose. Next is location. So for you guys, you want to be saving that onto your user area. If you check, if you haven't checked already, you should all have 50 gigabytes of data available in your user area. So just set the location to anywhere in your user area. Um, best to make sort of like a media, a film, a CTEC folder, um, and then within that sort of like a project file. To do that, you can click browse, and then that will open the folder window to set that up. All of these should be absolutely fine by default. So we just need to go ahead and click OK. OK, so here we are now actually loaded into Premiere Pro. So what is the purpose of Premiere Pro? Well, I'd say the main reason of using Premiere Pro is to edit separate clips into one continuous sequence. Um, it's also good for manipulating audio, um, effects, color, uh, transitions, all that sort of stuff. You can eventually start building into it. Uh, but the main purpose of Premiere Pro is to put clips into a sequence and then have sort of like a final product at the end of it. Um, so to do that, the first thing we're going to need to do is, is have some footage. So um, I'll explain to you the four windows we've got on the screen, first of all, uh, to get around that. So in our top left corner here, you can see when I click on a box, it comes out, it has a blue outline around it. You can show you which ones you've got selected. Uh, this one's our source window. So in here, we can actually review clips and watch them back almost like a, a YouTube video. We can play through them, watch them, choose selections as we get onto later. Uh, to the right of that, we have the program or the output screen. Um, this shows the final product. So everything we build on our timeline will come out as a as footage on this screen which we'll be able to see later in the bottom left this is normally when we where we import our footage and also where we can find our effects panel so when we want to start adding transitions effects everything like that we can do so through here and then right now we don't have any sequences loaded up but this is where our timeline will sit and where we can start dropping our footage in sequentially so one after another um, and slowly start building up some sort of project. So that's the layout of Premiere Pro. Just these four screens kind of help us do everything we need to when it comes to editing. And we've obviously got our toolbar down the middle here, and then we've got a few things we can do at the top with the bars up there as well. Okay, so now we understand a bit about the four windows, let's actually get some footage into Prem. So to do that, it says import media to start. Well, how do we go about that? There's a few ways. Uh, the simple way is file import. Um, there's a shortcut to that, which is control I, which I quite like to use often. Shortcuts really help sort of speed up the editing process. Um, or you can simply just double click in this area here. So I can double click and that will bring me up with my window. So in your finder window, you can go through, hopefully you should have all your footage already in your user area. So um, consider that first. You don't ever want to be editing straight off the SD card. What happens then is if you ever take the SD card out, all your footage will go red and it'll say, where's it gone? It's gone missing because it needs to be reading from it constantly. So if we can have that footage on your user area, that is great. You should have enough space to put that all on there. So um, if we consider this to be my user area, I've got some clips from the Terminator here. So I'm just going to select a few of them and hit open. Once you do that, it does take a little while to load in, but once that loading bar is complete, you should see the thumbnails of them all appear in the bottom left window here. Now it's up to you how you wish to display these. You can either have them in a list order or by uh, clicking this little icon here, it says icon view. You can now see a little thumbnail for each video. And as you hover your mouse over from left to right, you can kind of scrub through the clips just to get a rough idea of what was filmed in that clip. So that makes it a bit easier to go through. Um, so that's a really easy way of importing footage. As you can see now, it's a bit harder to double click to add some more. Um, but if I wanted to, I could press Control I and that would bring up the import window as well. Now, it's not just video you can import into this window. You can also import audio. 
um, and this is where it's all going to be kept so anything you're going to be using in the project when it comes later to things like text or images um, audio everything like that will all be stored in this section so hopefully nothing should go missing okay right so we're moving forward a little bit now so we've got our footage how do we start looking at it well as you can see here I've double clicked on one of the clips and that allows me to view it in this top left window this is like I said a little like YouTube playback video bit where we can sort of click or double click on an image one of the thumbnails and we can actually play through the video I can hit play and that will run over it I can let it keep rolling if I want to um, you can also sort of take a screenshot here so if there's a frame you really like but you want to just have a picture of it you can hit this little export frame icon here and that will just freeze the image on there and save it either into your project or into your user area um, however when you're looking through your clips you'll probably realize that there's bits at the start or bits in the middle that you don't want to use or maybe there's just a chunk a selection you'd like um, and we can do that really easily so, so let's say for example on this clip I want the I want the clip to actually start in my footage from about here I can hit the I button on my keyboard and you can see it's highlighted now and then if I move forward a bit I can say okay and I want my clip to actually stop about here I can press the O button on my keyboard now really easily you can see I've got a selection that we can then put into a timeline in the future um, you can do this with all your clips you can go through them choose a selection so normally it'll be a case of chopping off a little bit at the start and a little bit at the end maybe where you've kind of said action or you've just started filming and then a bit at the end where you might have all ended up giggling or something like that where you don't really want to include that in the final edit um, so now we've got our selection we need to move it onto a timeline I'm going to jump to that now, however we first need to set up a sequence for the timeline. So let's get that timeline sorted. So to do that we need to go to File, New, Sequence. Again, Control N if you want to know the shortcut for that. Um, luckily it's already actually preset to the one we're going to be using. However, sometimes it can end up down here. You might start by looking at something like this and you're like, oh I don't know what any of this means. Well. For what we're doing, we're going to be filming on digital SLR cameras, we're going to be filming at the best quality we can at the moment, which is 1080p, and we're going to be filming at 25 frames per second. Now you can give it a sequence name, I highly suggest doing so, um, normally it would be something like final edit or rushes or something like that, give it a name just so you can keep track of it. So I'm going to hit OK, and you can see, again, because it's an item we're using, this has now come up in our project. So if for whatever reason you might have accidentally clicked off your timeline, you think, oh, where's it gone I've just done four hours of editing um, not to worry you can see this little icon here is telling you it's a sequence so we can just double click on that ah and it's back okay so this is what the timeline looks like we've got one two three video channels and one two three audio channels as well so any video we're going to be putting along these top three tracks and any audio we're going to be putting along these bottom three tracks now it is possible to add more if you need it um, you can just right click and then do um, you can right click on any of these tracks sorry here and then you can do add tracks and once you do that you can choose how many video tracks you want to add and how many audio tracks you want to add but for now three and three should be absolutely fine this is called our video playhead here so it works very very much the same as how our sort of youtube slider works however this just affects on our timeline and whatever we see on where this playhead here it will be represented in our output it's just doing a quick auto save if you ever see that pop up Okay, so we've got our selection here. How do we get it onto the timeline? Well, really easily, it's just a case of dragging it out of that monitor and dropping it into our sequence. Now, quite often you'll see this. The clip does not match your sequence settings. Do you want to change it? Um, right now, I've, I've told it what sequence settings I've liked already, so I'm going to keep existing settings currently. However, you can see, for me right now, that clip is extremely small. I can't even see it on my timeline, so what I'm going to have to do is zoom in. Um, and to do that you've got this bar at the bottom you just need to select one of the circles and then just drag that inwards and that will give you a zoomed up view so I can now see I've got my clip here um, if it's still a bit too small you can start dragging up some of these uh, layers just to give yourself a bit more room so there we go I can even see a bit of the thumbnail now and if I hit play on this icon you can see it moves this playhead rather than our other one so this is the section that we've chopped out and the bit that we wanted to use from that clip perfect uh, currently it just goes on to play black because that's the end of our sequence we've got nothing left after that but I'm pretty sure you can see where this is going to be going um, a few little tips when you're here so right now um, 
I've got a little toggle track here. So if I've got multiple videos, I can always kind of hide them with this eye icon. You can see it's gone black now and then reappears there. Same with the audio. You can do a similar sort of thing. This is mute. So if I want to mute tracks, I can press those. Um, but let's say you've got 10 channels of audio, uh, but you don't want to go through and mute everyone, but you just want to hear one. You can do this one called solo. That will mute every other track and just let you hear that track alone, which can be really useful if you're listening to like a voiceover or a soundtrack going, going behind the film. Okay, so this is great. We've got our first clip in there. Um, what we can do now is obviously we can go onto another clip. Let's double click, have a little look. Uh, okay, we're going to select I for our endpoint, move along. Her eyes move, that's great. We're going to go over an out point. And I'm going to drag that in to the second one. And you can see on this time I'm going to play, it instantly cuts to the next clip. Fantastic. That's what we're looking for. So with these clips, unfortunately, there isn't any audio. But if you did want audio, dragging the clip just like this would also attach an audio bit underneath. Um, if you just want video, you can drag from here and you'll get the video only. And if you want just the audio, you can drag from here and that will apply just the audio into your audio track. Um, so just be careful when you are dragging clips over it's quite easy to drop them over something like I'm about to do here and that will actually cut and and sort of destroy the other clips it's kind of made them not how we've wanted them so if you want to undo something you can do control Z there we go and I can just be shorter I normally just drop it on the timeline give it some space and then you can always kind of move it up a little bit as well so there we've go we've kind of we've set up a new sequence we've actually clicked on a few bits of uh, footage and we've kind of shortened it down and popped it into our timeline and we've actually put a few in order um, so now the next one we're going to be moving on to is uh, exporting the clips we've recorded okay so let's move on to the last bit which is exporting our clip so hopefully um, after you've taken a little while to go through the clips that you've wanted and you've selected the bits you've wanted um, you have somewhat of a finished sequence a very basic one at least um, on your timeline which is the sequence you wanted in order so how do we go about exporting this as an actual video so to do that we need to make sure first of all when we click here that the blue selection is around our timeline that's very important and then we go to file and export and then media or again the shortcut for that's control m uh, once we do that just give it a moment and we should have an export window pop up Okay, so now that our export window has popped up, the first thing we want to do is make sure that our format is in H.264. What that will allow us to do is when we go into presets, we can actually select um, the one we most commonly use, which is YouTube 1080p Full HD. Um, like we'd set up our sequence to record in Full HD, we want to be exporting in Full HD. Um, one people get confused with is the output name. So currently it's final edit because that's what we called our sequence, um, but we can choose where that's saving to. So I can go into um, studio videos or in my user area wherever I need to and I can set a file name there for it to save to I'm just gonna leave it as final edit for now that's great um, and you can also increase the render quality by hitting the little tick button there once you've done all of that and you make sure you're exporting the video and the audio you can go ahead and it hit export and that will give you a rough time on how long it will take to export the video obviously the longer the sequence the longer the export will take so bear that in mind if you're coming up to deadline time